So one of the most expensive building costs is the mechanical system used for heating and cooling the building. So this applies to the system itself as well as maintaining the system and running the system. So a way to keep these costs down is by planning ahead and putting in these louver systems that can help regulate the amount of heat gain that the building gets from the sun. So if you live in a warmer climate or somewhere that you experience high temperatures, typically you would want to have your sun shading devices on the exterior of your building, meaning that it is outside the building's exterior skin. This is because if you have lines that are on the inside of your house, which most houses do have, then that solar radiation is going to penetrate through that window. And in that case, the blinds aren't doing anything other than shading the space. So when you're thinking about your louver systems, you want to think not only about shading the spaces, you want to think about the solar heat gains that your building will experience based on how much heat is actually getting into the building. So if you think about it, if you put your louver systems on the outside of your windows, then not only are you getting that diffused light, you are also blocking that solar radiation from getting into the building. Which is great when you are considering cooling costs for your building, which is one of the most expensive aspects of building use. So this goes for not only louvers, but solar shading screens as well. So when you have blinds on the interior and you close them in the hopes of blocking out that heat and direct sunlight, you are actually creating this pocket where all of this heat builds up and it actually gets even hotter. So a way to avoid this altogether is just by putting your shading devices on the outside of your building's exterior skin. Another thing to consider is the type of glass that you're using. Whether you're using single pane glass, double pane, triple pane, channel glass, low E glazing, there are countless types of glass that you could use in your building, but the best one is the low E glass. There are a few different types of low E glass, but typically they have this film that goes between the different glass layers, which you can see in this diagram here. As you can see from the arrows, the film allows the sunlight to get through the glass, but it blocks out the solar radiation and redirects it back into the atmosphere. So this is a great way to still be able to get daylighting into your building, but not have to deal with all of the excessive heat gain that comes with it. And note that this isn't tinted glass or anything like that. It, it looks like regular translucent glass, but it has that special film on the inside that allows only the transfer of daylighting through. Another thing to note is that in winter conditions, when you are heating the building from the interior, it traps in that heat and prevents it from escaping out the window, which also helps to keep the heating costs down. So of course, all of these strategies are dependent upon your building's shape, your building's orientation, your building's location, climate, and many other factors. But just know that you don't always need these high-tech solutions for solving basic problems for your building, like sun shading. And know that you can use things like louvers and low E glass and building shape and overhangs to accommodate for these different conditions. You can have certain parts of your building start to become shading devices and things like that. That's what makes architecture fun, is trying to find low-tech solutions for these problems. And while these high-tech solutions can be really interesting and, and exciting, they can also be really detrimental if they are not maintained and if they stop working, they become functionless. And when they're not serving their purpose, they become more of an annoyance, if anything else. So that's why sometimes it's better to just get back to the basics and think about simpler solutions. These are a few sustainable strategies for daylighting and shading and optimal building orientation that hopefully you guys can utilize and create low-tech sustainable buildings. So I hope you guys found this helpful. If you have any questions about this or really anything else, feel free to put any questions or comments below and I will do my best to address them to the best of my knowledge. If you like this style of video, please let me know and I will do more of these in the future. If you like this video, please hit the like button and 
please subscribe for more videos like this and other stuff. Alright, have a great week. See you next time.